and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about 80s Don't Stop, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of both the lyrics and the music video to see what they can tell us about their unfolding storyline. Now, Don't Stop is a song that, much like the majority of 80s tracks, has been co written by both Anjung and Mingi. This is a song that explores the contrasting emotions of a person who is overcome by desire and quite literally doesn't want the other person to stop, and in true 80s fashion, this fast paced mass their piece is accompanied by a cinematic music video that further expands on the lore. Now, back in Fever Epilogue, the Fever series actually ended with the storyline basically overlapping with the events that we saw in Say My Name, so as of right now we can say the Fever and Treasure are successfully connected with one another. Even if we didn't see much of it in Turbulence and the Real, the diary book actually revealed that the Black Pirates freed Yosan from the Android Guardians and the rest of it is successfully got in touch with the resistance that is fighting in the straight land. Now up until now we obviously don't know where and when the next series will be set. It's possible that it will reprise where we left back in answer or maybe explore a completely different stage of the story altogether. We don't stop however, I feel like that the intention is to introduce us to the pirate concept that was mostly relevant back in the Treasure series, and now more than ever we get the sense that it is have no intention of stopping in their quest to achieve their goals. As we see in a second, for instance, the story told in the video heavily focuses on them gathering what they need in order to begin their next adventure. The group is divided into different units, and each of these units is focusing on retrieving a specific object necessary for their quest. Before we get to that, however, at the very beginning we first reunite with our captain, who this time didn't join the mission, but is waiting for the others' return instead. Now, if the song is about desire and the anxiety and excitement that this desire is about to induce, then we can say that Hanjun might actually embody these feelings as we apply them to the story itself. We see him sitting alone with a replica of a galleon, and as the video progresses, his desire for this new adventure and this new treasure makes him more and more impatient and destructive. Like we saw in many of his songs, for instance, their drive and passion is often compared to a burning fire, and this time is no different, because in Don't Stop, the captain's desire to get what he wants causes a fire that destroys everything that surrounds him. Now, in the video, we also see that when he throws the galleon in the flames, this action ends up blinding him in one eye. If you think about it, on a metaphorical level, this could be a way to show that the burning desire to get their treasure is a drive that literally blinds them. In the video, however, this sacrifice eventually pays off, because when the captain destroys the galleon, he actually finds a key hidden inside of it. Now, up until now, we obviously don't know what this key might open, but for now, my personal guess is that it might be a key to a treasure. If this is the case, then this time around there's a huge difference in comparison to the past, because, especially at the beginning, their treasure was often associated to a dream, an illusion, or something that was still far away. Now, however, they have the key to it, and as we see in the rest of the video, they know exactly what they need in order to reach their goal. I think that this is a very cool way to show it is as growth, while at the same time staying faithful to their concept, because now more than ever, we get the sense that no matter what happens, nothing can actually stop them. At the beginning, for instance, we see Mingi being thrown out of a car in the middle of nowhere. He's injured, tied up, and we get the sense that whoever hurt him took him hostage and is now in the process of releasing him. Now, since the video begins right in the middle of the action, we obviously don't know what's this about and who took Mingi to begin with, but whoever it was is now no more, because as soon as they release him, the car explodes, thus killing everyone inside. This scene basically shows us what happens when people mess with the pirates, and when Mingi goes through the debris, he actually finds a box that seemingly contains the artifact that he was meant to retrieve in the first place. Now, to be honest, it actually took me a minute to understand what it was, but I'm pretty sure that in this scene, Mingi might be holding a sundial compass. This is a nautical instrument that essentially combines a compass with a sundial, and as a matter of fact, this is a very useful object for when you are at sea, because it basically tells you where you are and what time it is at the same time. When it comes to Wu Yang and Sun instead, we see that their task is to retrieve what seems to be a nautical telescope. If you remember, we actually saw the boys using a very similar object all the way back in Illusion, but this time Wu Yang and Sun have to play poker to get it, and as we see in the video, 
video Uyang is also ready to cheat in order to win this prize. By the time the game ends and the situation escalates, the two of them are eventually saved by the arrival of the others, who in turn just go back from their own mission. You see, when it comes to Yo, Sang, Yuno, Song, Wang, Jungo, they might actually have the most important task of them all, because in the video they have to break into a pawn shop to retrieve something essential to continue their journey. As we see Mingi finding the compass and Uyang and San cheating their way to win the telescope, the rest of the gang is breaking into the shop's vault in order to get to the real treasure. Now this treasure does include money and diamonds, but the most important thing in there is actually a document that Yuno finds on top of the cash. This is a certificate of ownership that attests that the Destiny ship is actually owned by HJ, and this is very important because the HJ that we know is none other than Han Jung. This might actually imply that the real reason why the captain is losing his mind back at the house is because he pawned off the Destiny ship, but that the rest of the members are not trying to get back. Even if the document says that HJ is the owner, the document itself is in the vault of the pawn shop, so he lost the ownership of the ship and everything seemed lost because of that. Now, however, the crew got it back, so when Hanjun finally reunites with the others, the pirates are finally ready to start their new adventure, quite literally sailing on Destiny. By the end of the video, it is arrived at the shipwreck of the Destiny ship and find it half buried in the sand. This, however, doesn't seem to bother them because now they have everything they need and they won't stop until they reach their goal. To know how the story will continue, however, we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!